Hier drinnen ist ein Staubwolke. Ja. Ah. Also so sieht das aus. So this is a midterm review of the Alucard rooftop conversion Icarus that I've been uh, driving around with now for one and a half years and I've been to Namibia and back to Tanzania with it and traveled in Tanzania extensively and we'll see uh, what really works and uh, there's also a couple of shortcomings that I will point out. So this is the corner in the front uh, next to the windscreen. You can see that um, here there's a crack. The white part is the Alucard rooftop conversion on the inside. And uh, this here is the bracket that holds the door gasket. So that's the normal car sealant. Uh, I applied it from the outside after I already had the marine silicone in. You can see a little bit of the grey marine silicone here. So that's not ideal. That's my mistake because I didn't have the car sealant then and uh, we needed to go on safari pretty quickly so I was in a time constraint. That's basically the windscreen, part of the windscreen. Of the original Land Rover windscreen, the, the, this is the bolt, and uh, this the whole thing is a very tight fitting. I hope you can see now where, where I mean it to be. So it's this part here. The modern elephant, or the old elephant, gets sad, nicht mehr. You have the rooftop conversion here, and you have the the windscreen, and there is a couple of bolts that that fix the the rooftop conversion to the windscreen. The point is that the original uh, Land Rover roof, which is of course much lighter than the Alucard roof, has a thick rubber gasket on top of the front of, of the windscreen. And it also has uh, thick gaskets, rubber gaskets in the rear behind the C-pillar, between the C-pillar and the, the rear of the car. So there is some sort of uh, shock absorber or anti-vibration gasket between the original roof and the car. But there is nothing like this between the Alucab roof and the original car body. Um, and the Alucab roof, of course, being much stiffer than the original roof, um, will not take the shocks of a corrugated road. So it starts cracking here and I think I could probably um, take the roof off again and uh, put some sort, uh, put, put at least a black normal car sealant between the windscreen and the Alucard roof. Uh, currently it's just marine silicone and a lot of marine silicone so it's not a lack of, of it. But certainly there is an issue with vibration here and um, an issue with the very soft Land Rover uh, body uh, that, that's basically very flexible aluminium. If you take off the roof you can bend and warp it in all directions. And uh, on the other side the uh, extremely stiff aluminium construction of Alucab and aluminium is rather brittle uh, compared to steel. So basically if there's no dampening it breaks and that's what it's doing now in the in the corners here. I think it's not yet critical and I probably take it off and weld it again and but that's not a long-term solution. 
if if you're going off road and you you drive on corrugated roads, it will break again because it's a weak point. We are now moving into the very crowded workshop to demonstrate something. To explain what I mean, I uh, put this small uh, rivet nut and I put it into a aluminium profile. Some sort of rivet or rivet head or nuts running around in the tubing of the rooftop conversion uh, from the very beginning. Um, and to me it looks like uh, it was something like uh, this uh, broken off rivets. Maybe they put them in with too much pressure and then they broke off and they are now running in the tubing of the car which is very annoying. Uh, whenever I go around this curve I can hear the small rib nuts or whatever it is shifting inside the tubing. First it's annoying to hear it all the time in curves and secondly it's quite strange to think that maybe there are some rivets missing uh, that have broken loose like now and so they are running around like this I wrote to Alec Cap and they replied to me uh, telling me that I basically just have to track them down and drill a hole into the aluminium profile which looks a bit like this it's a closed uh, D profile of course so I would drill a hole here and then put in some silicone and drive around so that the rivets, rivets get stuck on the inside on the blob of silicone. The problem is that first I have to drill a hole into I don't know how many of these tubes because uh, it's not so easy to track down where the noise comes from. And then uh, the holes uh, would need to be a bit larger so that I can either get in enough silicone and um, also maybe try to catch this uh, broken off rivets with a vacuum cleaner to suck it out basically of the tubing. So I'm not very happy to uh, doing this, they've so far not done it. And I will probably drill a hole but that's certainly something that Alucap has to fix in the future. That's the shadow awning and the alley cup as well and the cooling windows. They work quite nicely. There's the table mount for an alley cap side table that uh, basically will be attached here. Uh, I mounted an airline rail here um, because you have to take off the this cover anyways when you mount the cooling windows um, and there's some relatively solid attachment points for bolts and you can hook in some rings and secure your load. One thing that Alucab I believe should do is, uh, I pointed it out already in the old video, you have the A, B, C pillar here and especially the C pillar connection to the roof is very weak. Originally there is a, a bracket uh, with la uh, connecting the Land Rover roof and the C-pillar but you can't use this bracket so it's just bolts and um, we all know that the uh, Land, Ro Land Rover roofs are very prone to folding and uh, the Alicap roof of course is a, is a frame and is uh, very solid and stiff but the chassis below it I mean, especially these pillars are quite soft. I mean, they are aluminium with some steel inserts. Um, so one thing that I can imagine is that they change that and uh, make a more a better attachment that transfers the uh, the forces better into the into the car's body. Or the other thing that I would wish for is that they offer um, something like a roll bar that goes um, behind the rear seats. Um, connects to the to the rooftop conversion and goes into the Land Rover uh, mounting points for roll bars which is somewhere here if you I think if you move the seat um, there's a mounting point here or it is here I'm not sure but um, if you look at the safety device uh, roll bars then you will know that the, um, there are Land Rover mounting points for these roll bars at least since the Puma but I think TD5 also had these mounting points already. 
So there are mounting points in the front, uh, outside, coming from outside, so you would have a roll bar on the outside of the front window, a piece of roll bar, and then you have to have the rooftop cover conversion, and you have like a C-shaped uh, roll bar coming up here, going up to the rooftop conversion, connecting to the rooftop conversion, and maybe uh, going over this here, like a round tubing standard roll bar. So since uh, people always like to buy mod modules and um, piece their own things together, they could make this roll bar optional, but um, I think they definitely could hit two flies with one stroke by offering a roll bar solution integrated with the rooftop conversion. And uh, I believe a lot of people would go for it and they could make some extra money on it or people could just buy the rooftop conversion first and then the roll bar later. If you look at the Gullwing window here, uh, the gasket is coming out, so there's a bit of an issue with mounting it. I also had to cut the Gullwing windows that they would fit into the defender's sidewalls. So not really perfect fit. You can make it fit, but it should be slightly smaller in the first place, so that you don't need to do that. But in general, I think the quality, the build quality is okay. But uh, front runners, schooling windows are definitely um, of a better quality. I know them from my friend's car and uh, they have a better build quality. Yeah, so here again is the, the black sealant I was talking about. Anyways, I think the dampening of the marine silicone is not much less than the car sealant. And here really needs to be a, a proper shock absorbing layer of a very good rubber sealing, uh, sealant. A very good rubber uh, gasket. The same here, I mean here I used the original uh, Land Rover one that's fairly okay and here you see the, the Land Rover original um, rubber where the rooftop rests on but again it's made for a much lighter roof and not for this heavy roof and uh, there needs to be a proper shock absorber that connects this um, very soft body here with the solid rooftop conversion that is much stiffer. Another very small issue I have is um, you have two gutters here. You have like the main gutter and the rooftop conversion that goes all the along the side of the roof, and then you have uh, smaller gutters riveted on that just cover the uh, front and rear door, which generally work very well. Uh, the only issue is if you open the front doors, uh, the water runs down into basically. Especially if the car was parked, there's a lot of water here and you sit down, the gutter lowers a little bit because you sit down the weight shifts to the front of the car so the water pours in, inside the car here in, in, if you open the doors. It's a small issue. So I would probably just leave out the, these front gutters for the next rooftop conversion. If you do an upgrade, I think the, the top gutter it's more than sufficient to catch all the water. Uh, there's not really a need for the secondary gutter and it just channels the water inside the, the front of the car. So this is the pop-up roof here inside the car and you see this is uh, a normal rubber foam and you see that how it settles and it stays there compressed once it settles in which is kind of okay until now. I'm not sure how it lasts uh, on, a on a long run. I mean, the, the foam gaskets are pretty cheap. I mean, here it's already compressed a lot. And again, this is a point where the vibration is transferred from the body into the rooftop conversion. I think it could be a proper rubber gasket. It would not settle in, but come up again if you move to this uh, sleeping area. Yeah, so I look happy if you get this um, mounting issue fixed and solved. Uh, if you can make a good shock absorber between the rooftop conversion and the car's body, I think you have to contact some uh, canopy producers because they, by now, know mostly of them. Mostly they know about this issue now, especially for aluminum canopies. And I mean, you produce aluminum canopies yourself, so you should actually know about this issue. Um, and it's not just a rubber ceiling or rubber gasket, it's also um, 
the torque of the bolts that hold together the rooftop conversion and the car's body need really to be um, very specific um, and because you if you have a rubber gasket and you compress it too much you have the same issue as, as well um, and uh, foam would not cover that because it compresses and it doesn't rebound it's not really a proper shock shock absorber and shock taker